Welcome back to another episode of The Kid Stays in the Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Cooper, and joining me today is... Beatster Cooper. <laughs> that was you having it in the bag? <laughs> yeah, bro. In the bag. I didn't even feel like that took any energy for you to come up with. I know. It came up with it right on the spot, right in the bag. All right. <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> Uh, joining me today, as always, is Solomon Cooper, and today we are going to be discussing the latest film. In, the latest film in the DC saga. Um, I don't know if we can the even DC still, saga. I don't even know if we can kill, still call it the Snyderverse, but I think that this would still firmly be planted there. in the in the Snyderverse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that is um, Flash. Andy Muschietti's the Flash. The Flash. What is it called? The Flash. War of the Worlds. No, it's just called The Flash. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's just called The Flash. Are you sure? I think you're thinking of the comic, which is The Flashpoint Paradox, which nope, they're kind of based it definitely on. definitely not what I'm thinking of. Well, why would you I've think it's called even... Flash War of the Worlds? <laughs> it's not called World of the <laughs> It's not called War of the Worlds, but it's called, like, Worlds Collide or something. No. I think you should look it up. I don't need to. It's called The Flash. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, at the offset, I'm just going to say... Uh, we will not be discussing any of the um, allegations swirling around uh, Ezra Miller's uh, misbehaviors. Um, I don't think it's really conducive for this kind of podcast. So we'll acknowledge that they exist, and then we're going to move past them, and they're not going to come up again. Mm -hmm. Real. True. So um, this is a weird movie to be discussing because poor K tell us about it the, the Snyderverse is effectively dead and DC new DC had uh, James Gunn made a decision I assume in partnership with uh, other producers and executives that they were going to go ahead and announce that they were completely rebooting um, the DCU they made this decision when they're still three movies were left at least that are coming out in this universe. Um, and I, I genuinely don't understand what their logic was there. To me, they should have waited, uh, let these movies come out, then announced what they were going to do. And also the other movies would be in production. You know what I mean? So then the movies would be coming out a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. What they've done right now, it feels like is set all of the movies that are remaining on fire and, destroyed any public interest in going to see them and i think that you really can see that in the flash's box office numbers sure sure um so let's dive right in let's let's do that uh so the movie starts off i think on an incredibly high note where alfred is calling the flash to basically mop up the stuff that Batman doesn't feel like doing. Mm -hmm. And we have the return of uh, Ben Affleck's Batfleck, as he is sometimes not so affectionately called. And he's doing a tremendous job. A, a lot I love Ben Affleck's Batman. Yeah, a lot of people are saying things like, oh, Ben Affleck is finally finding his, his footing as Batman. I think he found it from day dot, but apparently some people disagree. Are, act, yeah, disagree. So anyway... We have this really fun uh, action scene of the Flash, desperately low on like carbohydrates. You know, he's trying to get a sandwich, some some fuel, so he can keep going because his metabolism so fast. And uh, you know, Batman's doing his thing, trying to chase down these uh, these guys who've stolen I don't know some kind of MacGuffin, something that's going to poison the water or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they bombed a hospital. And it's a, it's a, it's all a, it's a, it's yeah, a, and they bombed a hospital. Yeah, they bombed a hospital, and it's a, it's a, re, it's a really great scene, and I, I'm curious if you felt the same way. From the minute it started, I was like, this is so good, but I also felt so sad that I could barely like get all the way into it because you know this this universe is dead. You know what I mean? So you're not going to see Ben Affleck's Batman anymore. You're probably not going to see this version of Wonder Woman anymore. Um, and most likely you're not going to see this version of the flash anymore. So seeing wonder woman, Batman and the flash all doing this thing, you can see what was supposed to be the culmination or one of the culminations after, I guess, justice league 
of of Zack Snyder's vision for the DC universe, and the, to know that it's all dead and it doesn't really matter anymore made the whole prologue, which was very very fun, mm-hmm. feel kind of sad to me. Was that something you were even thinking about when it happened, or no? No, not really. Honestly, I kind of was just able to like just sit there and just feel like oh, I'm just watching. I'm just watching a fun superhero movie. You yeah. Know? Um, I think I was able to like separate myself. Although that is a really really sad thought because I do like all these, all, all of these performances. Yeah. From all these people that we've grown to know and love. <laughs> well, I guess we've only seen Ezra Miller's Flash and you know one other movie, but we have seen. It two times, Heck yeah. I was the, gonna say the crappy times. version. And look, I was not one of those people who was, you know, starting or joining the petition to, you know, release the Snyder cut. Uh, but I was very excited to watch it, and we made a whole day of it back in New York, did we not? Yes, we did. I, I just t- talked about that like yesterday, so it's really funny. And you said the same thing as I did. We made a day of it. We had an intermission. We had pizza. Yeah, we ordered, and we ordered like nice pizza. Oh, we ordered the the nicest. Um, but yeah, that was really fun. Long movie, and I I'm grateful for the people who fought for it. Yes, I really like it. Um, and look, I have been a huge supporter of the Snyderverse from the very beginning. A supporter is the wrong word. I'm I don't want to act like I'm an activist. I'm just a fan. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Snyder in general. Just his style is phenomenal. It's it's weird because you kind of get associated with being kind of a dude bro. Because Snyder kind of comes across as a dude, bro. Really? He probably is. Yeah, he's like this big jacked guy who does like martial arts and works out all the time. I wish I could be like him. And, but I loved Man of Steel when it came out. I saw it multiple times. Yeah, so did I. I was one of probably, I guess, two people who loved Batman versus Superman. Am I the two? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bought Batman versus Superman. On the like the after I saw the theater twice, yeah, he got like the the 4K Dawn of Justice edition or whatever. yeah, the 4K director's cut of that. Um, the only movie in this saga that I've actively not liked has been Wonder Woman two, and the Joss Whedon cut of Justice League, which I thought was garbage. Yeah, but yes, I'm a fan of Joss uh, Josh Whedon. <laughs> Joss Whedon. I'm a fan of Snyder's uh, particular style, Mm -hmm. and I know some people find it garish and ugly or whatever. Um, They're garish and ugly. Those people are (laughs) ugly. (laughs) Hate those people. Um, But yeah, so this this movie is directed by, um, I'm going to keep saying his name wrong, Andy Muschietti. 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 Yes. Um, And he directed It. He did. Um, It Chapter 1 is universally pretty much acclaimed it chapter two is a little bit more maligned um i like both of them yep the first one is definitely better yep yep but the first half that like the kid part of the book is better than the adult part so that was going to happen no matter what um but let's so let's start with like how they they do this opening in the flash movie we were really like talking around this movie for a while yeah they so they do this opening scene where he's going to like help out like clear out this hospital that's been bombed while Batman goes and chases down the bad guys. And they do this crazy dark thing <laughs> where all these infant babies in, like, the neonatal ward are getting, like, hurled out the window, falling towards their doom. <laughs> and just talk, talk a little bit about how they keep escalating the scene and making it darker and darker till it becomes funny again. It's just so crazy to watch, like, it's like eight babies all falling from the sky with like this nurse trying to save them and each baby is all like suffering from a different thing so one baby is having like knives flying towards it in slow motion the other one is having it get about to get crushed by two d- pieces of like debris right and a flamethrower is coming towards one baby's <laughs> face and uh it's just nothing was crazier than like watching the flash have to do like like it's like he's like creative yeah i don't know it's like it's like he's an artist doing uh genius things trying to save literal babies falling from the sky it was it was it was like a it was almost like a like a metaphor how like like what's the word um like how little sense it made 
just to, like how's it, it a metaphor i said it's almost like a metaphor but like, what is it would it have been a metaphor for i'm not saying it's a metaphor for anything like a metaphor as in i like metaphors are crazy and an outlandish wow i do not think you meant to say metaphor <laughs> i just mean metaphor no i did not mean metaphor yeah something like like raining cats and dogs what does that mean i don't what know. is that I don't really know if that has anything to do with this scene. Well, raining cats and dogs is so crazy that this is like that. Like, babies are raining as well. Oh, so that's God. equally as crazy. Well, that's some deep insight. I appreciate that insight that you have into that scene. Um, <laughs> but, you. yeah, it keeps it keeps escalating in darkness until it becomes funny. You know, because it's pretty horrific when the babies are flying out. But it's <laughs> so horrific when they fly out the window that it's almost a little bit funny just because of how <laughs> shocking it is. Yes. But what is great is... We so me and Solomon uh, were in New York when we saw this movie. We got to go see it at our favorite Alamo Draft House in downtown Brooklyn, and so it was a great movie watching experience in general. Mm-hmm. But though that that Alamo Draft House in Brooklyn, I think has the best audiences to watch movies with. Well, what? That's not necessarily true. What do you mean? I had to sit next to Talkie uh, McTalkerson. Oh, that's true. Talking at every single moment. Throughout the whole entire movie, and I hope he's listening because we hate you. <laughs> you suck. Yeah, Solomon did have to sit next to somebody who was talking the whole time. Not something you normally have to deal with at Alamo. This guy was also pretty high. For sure. This guy was the most annoying person I've ever seen in my whole entire life. He was talking and every single thing. He, he thought he was funny. No one he was sitting next to was laughing, especially not me. And the amount of times I wanted to punch him, but I was too scared he was going to like, Beat me up. And his girlfriend wanted to punch him very obviously also. Um, anyway, we actually have a fun tag to the story of these crazy talky people. But right now we have to talk about them. We have three more minutes in this segment. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's – then we have to – we're over. So, um, <laughs> yeah, this the scene keeps escalating. And I think it's a perfect example of the director understanding this character, Ezra Miller understanding this character, and them knowing how to balance doing cool action stuff. Uh, with escalating stakes and specifically using the Flash's type of abilities. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is the one time, because you'll never hear me say this again for the rest of the movie, where I think that the, 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 the decision to make the effects look a little bit fakey and uncanny valley ish with the babies Mm -hmm. really works because if you would have just had completely photorealistic babies it could have been a little bit too dark you know what i mean and yeah and weird i feel like it'd be weird to see i mean just fully yeah. realistic ch- children falling they're falling while knives are coming towards their face and anyway this is the setup for the movie um if you've seen the trailers or you know anything about it you can pretty much tell that the movie is, ends up being about the flash figuring out a way to go back in time so he can save his mom from getting killed yes. and his dad is in prison for murdering his mom because he's you know found there but we know that he didn't do it yeah we have no proof um so i don't want to gloss over this part but we are on limited time so i'm going to just go ahead and get into it whenever he comes to uh he changes the past he keeps his mom from getting killed um and then he goes to try and spend some time with his parents whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Bro, I just said we have like very little I know time. That he was he was ru- he was running towards the past in this weird way that right. they, they we can talk about in a second. But then he gets pushed out by some other speedster that we don't know about. I feel like that's important. Yeah, like a kind of demonic looking speedster, like yeah. knocks him out of the bubble. Yes, and then he's with his parents because he was just trying to go back to the. He was just trying to fix it and then leave. Right. He gets pushed out. So. But yeah, so he gets stuck in the past. Yes, that's, um, I feel like that's very important. I'm just skip okay, over it. Well, very quickly, he ends up running into basically his college version of himself. And it's a version of himself that's, I guess, five or six years younger than him. Yeah. And, uh, again, played by Ezra Miller. And we're not going to ha- actually have time in this segment to, to get into it. But I just want to point out how from the minute that they start interacting, you fully believe they're two separate people. You don't believe it's just like an actor having a fun time or whatever. Yeah. Like you really believe these are two fully formed different Barry Allens. Which is very important. Yeah. And we'll talk about it in just one second. All right. Take a quick break. (laughs) 
Um, what are we doing here, Rusty? What are we going to do? Uh, yep, we're doing the uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. King of the Hill yes, Rewatch Podcast. Yeah, so we're going to go through one episode at a time. Uh, come along for the ride with us. Come check it out. And hey, give me give me a good um, like Dale Gribble quote to go out on. Wingo. Yeah, Wingo. <laughs> Wingo. Wingo. All right. Well, join us. Uh, join us for uh, the uh, King of the Hill rewatch podcast. Maybe in the heart of Texas, that drinks his brew and he spits his chew. Maybe in the heart of Texas, the TV blares, but no one cares. Maybe in the heart of Texas. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine Wine and vinyl. vinyl. (laughs) So check us out on roguemedianetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. Hey y'all, I'm April. Hi, I'm Caroline. And we have a new podcast for you. What's it called, Caroline? Uh, Bloody Happy Hour. It's going to be your new favorite guilty pleasure. We're going to talk about some bloody stuff. Serial killers. True crime. Rape. (laughs) Rapists. Why not join us? We'll have a good time. You literally never know. I don't know what I'm going to (laughs) say. Bloody Happy Hour. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to the Kids Stays in the Podcast and our discussion of The Flash. Worlds Collide. Is that what it's called? <laughs> War, War of the Worlds. And also, why did you have to say it in like the most boring way possible? Like you really didn't want people to come back. <laughs> I was just like, I thought I would do something different. I'm always like, welcome back. So this time I was like, welcome back. Okay. This is too much for me to handle. All right, let's go. Let's talk. Let's discuss. So before the break, we were just mentioning like the the performance, like Ezra Miller's performance as playing two different Barry Allens, and they are very, very different people. One mm-hmm. grew up full of like trauma, and now has been the Flash and a part of the Justice League. And now one and one has their mom, and that really affects things. Yeah. In a crazy way. <laughs> Specifically that he's kind of like most well-adjusted, or not well-adjusted, maybe it's the wrong word, but kids who just grew up with no trauma and no nothing. Not that you should have trauma. Hopefully you can raise your children without having any. But he has no sense of depth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He he is a silly little guy. Yeah, he's not, he's, not, he's not super smart. Right. It seems like he doesn't really understand social cues, doesn't really understand language. I noticed. Um, I don't know if I'd say that. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't understand language. Bro thought he was at the cousin's dinner. Oh, God. What a joke ruiner for no reason. Sorry, dude. Sorry. He's just somebody who hasn't had to deal with anything, yeah. really. He's just kind of like a, I wouldn't say spoiled, but like just like a just like a guy. Right. So um, essentially the f- Flash realizes the original Barry Allen mm-hmm. that... Um, in this universe, he doesn't get his powers. And if he doesn't get his powers, maybe this whole thing gets undone. Um, at some point, they realize that uh, Zod from Man of Steel is back, and there's no Superman, there's nobody to stop them, and there may not even be a Flash. So he sets off to recreate the accident that caused him to become the Flash with his younger counterpart. Yes. Um, and... It works, but with the unintended side effect that the original Barry loses all of his flash powers. Well, they both got struck by the lightning. Right. So I don't feel like he would have 
I don't feel like just by him getting the powers, he would have lost his powers. I didn't say that. You said an unintended side effect. An unintended side effect of them trying to conduct this experiment is that he loses his powers. Okay. So now the Flash who knows how to be the Flash doesn't Doesn't have any powers. powers. And this ding-dong version of Barry has to try and be the Flash. Mm -hmm. And he is not good at it. Mm -mm, Not very at all. And this is something that I also want to really emphasize here the humor in this movie is very very good and it's not like when joss whedon tried to shoehorn humor into the justice league where it didn't belong this is a very natural uh type of humor that is birthed out of the characters and character interactions and it ranges from funny lines to physical comedy um there's a scene when the flash doesn't realize he's lost his powers yet. Mm-hmm. So he tries to like go into like flash speed mode and he's just like clomping around in a circle <laughs> in this lobby. And it's the funny, I laughed so hard at that scene. Yeah. He just like flapping his hands around <laughs> in like basically in slow motion. Cause that's what it, I'm, I'm assuming that's what it looks like without the effects and whatever. Right. Right. So it just, it was really funny, really creative idea. Cause I'm sure I, I like to imagine like what happened. Like they saw him doing that and they're like, this guy looks so stupid. This has to be a scene or something. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that probably is exactly what it is. Cause I'm sure that, they're like, hey, look, Ezra, you're going to have to run like this, but don't worry. We're going to have this cool CGI around you, so it's going to make it look you're going fast. Yeah. And he just had to do that, and they're like, what would it look like if you just didn't have any of that CGI and stuff? And it looked like him clomping around <laughs> like a clown in the lobby. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, so very quickly they realize he's, like, going through all this stuff. All the universe has changed. There's a really funny running joke about how Eric Stoltz is the guy from Back to the Future and, you know, all these different actors who were in different movies that were not the actors that are in the movies in, you know, our time. Why are you tying your shoe while we're doing a podcast? You can continue. I was listening. Yeah, but why are you t- why, we're not running around while we're doing this. Well, it's not a I jogging got, podcast. What if I got up and tripped? Well, then you tie them at the end before what you get I up. What if I forgot? What, who cares? Me. I'm going to trip and fall and die. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're going to trip and fall and die on the carpeted floor. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so really quickly they realize there's no other superheroes. Um, but Batman does exist. Yes. In this universe. Mm-hmm. And this was already spoiled by the um, advertisements. This is one area where I feel like because of Ezra Miller's issues, they couldn't really use him for marketing And this would have been something that I would say they shouldn't have spoiled in the trailers. Yeah. And I don't think they would have had to had the DCU not been in such dire straits and they were essentially losing their star as being able to speak publicly. Mm -hmm. So they had to like try and get some kind of interest. And that is they reintroduce um, Michael Keaton. Batman. As Batman. Um, He's not, it doesn't seem like it's, technically really the same bat universe as the Tim Burton one, but it's the same Batman. He's the same Batmobile. It's the same bat wing. Yes. And these are by far, I think some of the best shot, best performed everything scenes in the movie is whenever they're going to Wayne Manor, you have the, the original score from the Tim Burton movies. He shoots everything like it's the Tim Burton movies, but we have modern technology, so you're able to see Batman move and fight in a way that feels a lot more like something you'd see like in the Batman animated series than they were ever able to do in the brute, the Tim Burton movies just because that suit didn't move and yeah, you know CGI wasn't really at the place where it is right now. Um, but I did want to ask you, I think we t- might have talked about it a little bit, but what was it like for you when they brought back Michael Keaton? Because you... I say famously, you're not famous. So famously inside of our tiny little house, um, refuse to watch Michael Keaton's Batman movies. Cause you think they're boring. Cause you're okay. an idiot. You're an I imbecile. was like, okay, for one last time I declined, we were, I was like 14, but I would not watch it now either. Um, but I just want to let you know that you don't know for sure that it I was also the middle it. of the pandemic and there was nothing else to do. You I'd still rather it. die than do that. It's so stupid. My past self would have rather died. I would just rather not live. Now we're going to have to watch them. 
and you're going to like them. I just don't really want to. Too this, bad. I mean, I thought it was cool to see new Batman or old Batman. I was like, oh, it's this Batman isn't the same as the other Batman. But no, it didn't have like the same effect that it had on you, old man who watched all these dumb old person movies. It's not even that old of a movie. It came out in like 1995. <sighs> you sound like a horse. <laughs> Did I actually practice my horse sounds? You should, because you look like a horse too. That's rude. Also, uh, yeah. So, 1995 was like seven plus minus five. Yes, yes, I get it. It's old 13, to you. Twelve years before I was born. That is an old man movie. Only old people could watch, such as you. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I, I thought it was cool, but it was fun. But I don't have like any nostalgia or whatever. Well, you have to admit I that like that Batmobile stuff. and that Batwing are the best. I do like that dude like them. And that lot. Batcave is also the best. Well, I feel like they're all very similar. Um, the Batwing, what did I? I called it like a bat plane, didn't I? You said something stupid like that. Oh, I thought that was really funny. Continue. I was just gonna say that, like, so they basically are able to figure out that somebody from some alien, like from Krypton. Did land somewhere, but they didn't land in the United States. They did not get adopted by a nice they Kansas did, yeah, they didn't live couple. In Kansas. Uh, they got captured captured by the Russians. This leads to what I think is probably the second best, at least, um, maybe first best, uh, action comedy scene of them infiltrating this Russian base uh, with two flashes, one with no powers. Um, Which and is really funny. Sorry, I sorry to interrupt, but I thought it was really interesting that the main Flash, and this movie is called Flash, has no Flash powers for like fifty to sixty percent of this movie. Yeah, and I just thought that was interesting. or more. Yeah, it could be more, but I just thought that was really fun. I mean, and there I, still is a Flash in the movie. Yeah, but I know, but it's not the Flash. Yeah, is this movie called a Flash movie, or is it called the Flash? Well, he's still Barry Allen. And he's still the Flash, but he's not the Flash. He's just another Flash. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was interesting, and I thought it was good that they were able to make this movie in such a good way without having a f main flash the whole time. Well, th this infiltration of the Russian base is really great. They get in there, they find out that it's not Superman, it's not Kal El, it is Kara El. Is her name Kara El? I thought it was. Well, it's Supergirl, basically. Yeah. And she has not been raised by nice humans. She's been kept in a Soviet vault by the the dang. Dang Russians. Yes. Yuck. And um, anyway, they break her out. She says, I'm not going to help you fight Zod. Why would I help the humans? They're all bad. Look at what these humans did to me. Yeah. Evil, bad humans. I hate humans. So um, let's let's uh, just flash forward. Cause we, flash <laughs> we only have four minutes. Um, Holy cow. We only have four minutes. Yeah. You're all like, I don't think we're going to have very much to talk about. I didn't say that. Yeah, but we have a whole other segment in us. But we're not going to do it. Um, oh. So they basically recreate a huge scene from Man of Steel. And you have two Flashes, Supergirl and Batman, all fighting Zod and his minions in a recreation, an alternate version of Zod's invasion of Earth. Isn't that also shot like Man of Steel or whatever? Or like what? The, like what? What are you saying? What? I said what I said. He said, isn't that shot like Man of Steel isn't or whatever? That, isn't like that whole scene shot like how Man of Steel was? No, that's not what I'm about to say. Okay. That's the that's the problem. It's the climactic act of the movie. It's supposed to be this huge, amazing action scene, and there's some neat stuff in it. But it just looks like dog crap. Oh. Zack Snyder, Sorry. for all of his flaws, shoots action scenes in this amazing, titanic way that makes you real and or at least he's trying to make you real in awe of what these crazy things that are happening this scene the director just cannot figure out a way to ape Zack Snyder's style it's very clear that he was in love with the Tim Burton Batman movie because he finds a way to emulate the style of and beats of that when they're shooting the Bruce Wet Manor things mm -hmm. and but with this he just cannot do the Zack Snyder thing. So it ends up just feeling really generic. When I think of these scenes, I can just think of like big open fields with like random little people in it. I can't think of any cool choreography. Really? I'm thinking of a lot of cool things right now. I loved everything about it. I just thought it was ugly as hell. I thought the whole fight scene was so cool. 
I mean, there's cool the ideas are cool there's a really cool part where batman's like doing all these flips and and fighting people and like putting mines on the front of them and the back of them and then on their head but it's if if Zack snyder was shooting that he would have done the motion ramping thing it would have been like really epic and you would have been really able to tell what he was doing this just happens so fast it kind of just you know what i mean it's just over right about the time you're figuring out that it's cool sure um and i know we're we're kind of having to rush through this but i think it's important to mention that when they go back into the time f- bubble thing or whatever, they show how the universes are colliding. And at first it's really cool. And then they show like all the different versions of cinematic versions of Batman or Superman, Superman or the flash and how they're all different universes. Right. So it's like, Oh, the Christopher Reeve version was a different universe. That was me. I hit my mic. Um, Oh, the Adam West Batman. That's a different universe. The problem is it looks like crap. Oh my gosh. It looks awful. I, like, I know that's been said, and the director has said that it was intentional. They wanted it to feel otherworldly. Well, you just made it look like garbage. And it looked so garbagey, and it takes up so much time from what is supposed to be a really uh, intimate scene of the Flash realizing that the demon version of him that pushed him out is the second Barry Allen, who's just so devoted to the idea that he can fix it that he's become a monster that he can yeah like the idea that he could save everyone yeah because because basically batman and supergirl die every and they did it twice and this universe and and the original flash realizes that this universe is doomed there's yeah. nothing they can do to save it and he already made a mistake trying to save his mom he's not going to make the same mistake again this universe is doomed it's very sad they love michael keaton they love whatever the girl's Cara name L. is he plays Kara. Um, but they're dead, and this universe is doomed. But yeah. the other Barry doesn't want to admit that his universe is doomed because like, that for him, that's his whole universe. Yeah, he's like Miles Morales. Yeah, um, he wants to save everyone. You can't bring in other movies. We got thirty seconds. Yeah. So there's a uh, really touching scene where basically Barry has to go back and make it to where his mom dies. Yeah. And it's very, very sad. And I was about to cry, but that stupid guy that was sitting next oh, to Solomon was like, so much. pick up the tomato can. God. Pick it up. I almost shot him. I was, I was so angry. I was oh, so irate. I don't think I've ever wanted to commit crimes against humanity so much. Um, But yeah, look, I'm just going to have to abbreviate my thoughts on this movie because we're out of time now. Um. This movie is damaged by the fact that the DCU announced that this movie doesn't matter. This movie is damaged by the fact that Ezra Miller had so many allegations swirling around him, true or false, I don't know. Um, But he definitely was a liability. And the movie was damaged by having to do what I imagine were a lot of reshoots and retooling of some of these scenes to make it to show that all the different DC things were different universes, right? Mm -hmm. Which I imagine is why the CG was so unbearably terrible. Um, So the movie would normally have been to me like up there with like an eight or a nine, but because of all these weaknesses, um, I I would say I probably have to drop it down to like a seven because there's just too many problems that the movie has and they're anchored unfortunately to this really amazing movie that is inside of this movie with uh, awesome performances by Ezra Miller and and um, and Michael Keaton. So it makes me very sad that the, all those things coming together knock this movie down to like a seven for me. But I still think it's worth seeing. It's a, it's a, I, I really enjoyed the movie. I love this movie. I liked every choice they made. I thought everything looked awesome, really cool. Everything about it was fire. Uh, Straight bussin' on God. Um, I can't even cap because it was so good. Um, I think I'm going to give it an 8.5 personally. Like I said. (laughs) 8.5? You said it was so good. You described like a 10. No, I think it might be a 9.5. Okay. Yeah. Because like I said, I really liked it. I didn't really, I guess maybe I didn't notice all the, all these, I didn't think any of the things like actively looked garbage. And I thought that that world's colliding scene looked really cool. I thought that was really fun. And I liked all the other weird, uh, uncanny valley stuff that they did when they were doing this time travel. Uh, well, stuff. our time is up. You got to talk for so long. I know, but our time is up now. You should have chimed in more. So, yeah, we're actually two minutes over time. 9.5 is going to be what I say. 9.5. Hey, the Flash! Check it out. Um, it'll probably be at theaters for a little bit. I I do recommend watching it, but it I is kind of like pointless. It. Just don't pretend, just pretend like it's not another. Like just like watch it like a oh it's a DC movie. All right, the end. Abrupt ending.
See you next time. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.